Good evening to you, and welcome to the Boulevard Church of Christ Wednesday evening Bible study via live streaming and audio. So glad that you have joined us tonight, and uh, even uh, in the midst of everything that's going on in our society, by the grace of God, we're still here because God is still on the throne. And even though there are those, uh, even now, who think that they are in charge, God is still in control because he's a mighty God. And by his grace, we are here. So we are thankful this evening for this privilege to be able to be involved in this midweek Bible study. To all of our Boulevard family, so glad to have you tonight. So good to see you. Uh, and we are thankful for your presence, especially we are happy to have those who are our guests and friends, those who are visiting with us. Uh, so glad that you have become a part, if you are a returning visitor, that you have become a part of this Boulevard family in our study. If you're visiting for the first time, we're so glad that you have joined us. Uh, and our prayer is that you will continue to be a part uh, of this uh, midweek Bible study. As always, uh, we like to spend time in prayer before the throne of God, uh, giving him thanks for all of his goodness and asking his continued blessings for all of our lives. And if ever there was a time uh, that we need to be a praying people, we, we sure need to be talking to God right about now. Uh, we're living in some turbulent times, some turbulent days. But we serve a God who's able. And so, uh, as always, uh, tonight we will, prior to going into our study, we will uh, go to the throne of God in prayer uh, as we pray for these various requests. And we ask that if you can, please, as always, take that, take down these uh, prayer requests and in your own personal private prayers. Uh, be in prayer. Uh, and we will continue to pray until God answers. Uh, we pray, first of all, for uh, you, we ask your continued prayers for uh, the Jones and the Burden family. Uh, during the loss uh, of Sister Teresa Jones, uh, Judge Teresa Jones, uh, who is the niece of Sister Joyce Burden, uh, who passed away on this past Saturday uh, after a long illness. So continue to be in prayer for uh, the Jones family and the Burden family. Also, uh, continue to be in prayer. Obviously, everyone is aware of the situation that is going on in our nation's capital, uh, at the Capitol building. Uh, please, please, uh, we, we'll, we want to be in prayer for this situation tonight, but in your personal prayers, please be in prayer for our nation. Uh, we, we, are, uh, we are in some tender moments uh, in this in this nation, and, and we need prayer. Particularly, pray for the family. Uh, you, I'm sure, heard about the lady who was shot uh, on the Senate floor. Word uh, was received a little while ago by the media that that lady has now died. We want to be in prayer uh, for the family of uh, this lady who passed away as a result of gunshot <clears throat> and for those who were injured and uh, for all of those who are in harm's way, uh, those who are trying to protect the Capitol, all of the senators and government officials who are there in that building. Uh, this is just a turbulent, turbulent time uh, for our nation and uh, even for the hearts of those who are uh, causing this disturbance. 
Let's pray that God will change their hearts, uh, that they will see the harm that, that's being caused and change their minds about what they're doing. Uh, continue prayers for all of our Boulevard family who are sick uh, and shut in and all those who are still going through seasons of grief. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer for all of those. Hold this just now to the throne of God. Oh Lord, our Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God and you are an awesome God. You are a powerful God. You are God who's able. You're still on the throne and you're still in charge. And we thank you for being our God. And we thank you for being a loving God and a forgiving God. And we thank you for being a God who hears our every groan and petition. And because you love us, you answer our request according to your will. And so we come tonight on behalf of, uh, first of all, the Jones and the Burden family, uh, and the loss of our dear sister, Teresa Jones. Comfort this family now as only you can. and uh, Bless them with comforting grace. Give them strength to endure. Help them, Father, in the midst of sorrow and sadness to continue to look to you for strength and guidance and hope for the days to come. <clears throat> Lift them up with your mighty arm and bless us as extended family to be a source of strength and encouragement for them. And Father, for all of our Boulevard family who I have suffered loss recently and those who have suffered loss not so recently, Please bless all of those who are still going through their seasons. Help them, Father, to hold on to your unchanging hands. Father, we especially ask now that you will move in this nation in a powerful way. As we have witnessed uh, the riots at our nation's capital on today, a life has been lost as a result, many injured. Please, oh God, move on the hearts of those who are involved. Change their spirit, change their hearts, change their minds. Help them, Father, to know and understand that causing harm and destruction is not the way. Help them, Father, to look to you for guidance. Be with the leaders of this nation. Be with their mindset, and particularly our president, our current president. Father, move on his heart and help him to recognize and realize that things that are said and done putting this nation in great danger. The lives of our government officials are put in harm's way. Please, oh God, move and restore peace in this nation. Protect, guide those who are uh, making decisions, lawmakers, those law enforcement officials who are in the process of protecting uh, the capital this time, please watch over and protect them. Lord, we need you. Every day we need you, particularly during these turbulent times. We need you. 
And as we engage in this study tonight, we thank you for this privilege of being able to study your word. Help us to glean from your word things that you would have us to know and understand relative to our soul salvation, particularly uh, in the area of this. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his mighty name that we pray and give thanks always. Let us together say, amen. All right. Uh, Again, so good to see you tonight, and we thank you for being a part of this Bible study. Um, I have shared my screen, and um, somebody wave at me to uh, make sure that you uh, that you are seeing it. Uh, give me some indication that you're able to uh, see my screen. Uh, hopefully everybody can see it. Uh, so we're continuing with our study, God's game plan, uh, or God's game plan, rather strategies for abundant living. Uh, we're thankful to be able to turn to our study on this evening. We've been talking about discipline. And when we last met, we, uh, closed or ended our discussion as we talked about uh, some key elements uh, relative to uh, discipline. And we've been talking about in our last session, practice. Uh, practicing what it is that we are trying to, once we determine our purpose and uh, we take those uh, things that we struggle with relative to discipline, put the spotlight of prayer on them, then when we engage in uh, practice, a regular pattern um, of uh, doing those things that are spiritual and right in the sight of God, um, what we ended with the last time we met is when we practice discipline, what Satan attempts to use as a stumbling block ends up being a stepping stone. When we practice what we preach, God blesses us uh, to be able uh, to uh, make discipline a reality but it takes practice, it takes consistency, uh, it takes continuation. And our final thought relative to this particular thought was if you don't live it, you don't believe it. You can talk about what you believe uh, all day, but the proof is in the pudding. When we believe it, we'll put forth the effort to practice. And so as we begin our discussion tonight, the next uh, topic and uh, actually the last thought under this particular section that talks about uh, some keys to uh, developing a discipline. Uh, tonight we talk about perseverance. Uh, one of the most difficult things to do when you face ongoing challenges of life is to not give in or give up. Sometimes stuff can, can bear on you and weigh on you so tough. Uh, when you're trying to practice discipline, discipline, when you face challenges and difficulties in your life, and particularly uh, when there's something that you are trying to overcome or become better at and uh, you, you fall, you get up, you try it again, you fall and you keep getting up. And sometimes you get to a point if we're not careful, uh, some, but uh, what scripture wants us to understand, what God wants us to understand 
is that we have to continue to persevere. Perseverance has to be part of the make of the makeup of a Christian. It has to be a part of our DNA. The sheer will to keep going in the face of adversity uh, in a task it is brother really is a task in and of itself. And, and if you don't have some kind of determination, uh, it's, it's easy to cave or to give in. And when it comes to discipline, for many, for many people, uh, it's easier to stop trying than it is to keep putting forth the effort. I can't do this. I can't, you know, I've been trying. Uh, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to keep doing it because I can't overcome it. And so I'm just going to give up. Person who, who, who's an alcoholic or drug addict or whatever addiction they, they might be suffering from or whatever other struggle uh, they might have. Uh, even uh, trying to be faithful as a Christian, uh, trying to overcome uh, the ways of the world and, and you take three steps forward and four steps backwards. And sometimes for some people, uh, when they keep falling uh, backwards, they get tired of trying and throw up their hands and say, what's the use? But no, what God wants us uh, to understand is that we have to put persevere. We have to keep going. We have to keep trying. We have to keep putting forth the effort. Because uh, if we don't, we're, we're doomed to fail. And so we have to continue to, to try uh, to persevere. One of the greatest athletes uh, who demonstrated discipline and perseverance, but seldom talked about is an African-American woman by the name of Wilma Rudolph. Uh, it is said that Wilma Rudolph, uh, as a track and field star, was the first Black woman to win three gold medals in the 1956 Olympics. What was more remarkable is the fact that Wilma Rudolph was sickly as a child and could not walk without an orthopedic shoe until the age of 11. Now, for her to go from uh, being sickly and not even being able to walk without an orthopedic shoe to become, uh, going from that to becoming a three-time gold medal winner when black folk didn't even have uh, the right to even be in a lot of places back then. For her to overcome that, and go on to become an Olympic gold medalist, that took perseverance. That took determination. That took sheer will to overcome whatever obstacles she faced day in and day out. Because the story says, uh, the, the record declares that uh, until the age, so for 11 years, she had to put forth the effort to try to learn how to walk or to eventually learn how to walk without an orthopedic shoe. She had a desire and will to compete. And that's what has to happen with us as Christians. We have to have the desire and will to compete in this race that we run in called life. 
Because if there is no desire, if there is no will, if there is no perseverance, we're going to get blown off the track by Satan every time. Because his goal, his aim, is to create doubt to the degree we'll quit. And when we quit, he has us right where he wants us. And so perseverance has to be a part of who we are as we deal uh, with everyday life situations, and particularly as we deal with, with those things that are matters uh, of spirituality. Uh, Colossians 1, uh, verse 123, the Bible tells us, uh, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies uh, in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreproved unreprovable in his sight. He says, if you continue, now that we, uh, who used to be alienated in enemies from God because of wicked works, yet now we have been reconciled because that has now taken place. Paul says, if you continue, if you persevere in the faith, ground it and settle and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Paul says, the fact that we have been reconciled, the fact that we are no longer enemies uh, to Christ, we're no longer alienated, but because we have been saved, we have been washed by the blood of Christ, by grace, we have been saved. And because of the grace of God, that faith that we have now received, Paul says, you have to continue. You have to persevere in that faith, grounded and settled. You can't turn back. You can't fall by. Yes, it's going to be challenged. Yes. There are times when it's going to be hard. Yes, there are times when you feel like, uh, why, why continue? It ain't worth it. Yes, there will be times when it's going to seem like uh, it don't matter. But if, if we're going to make progress, spiritual progress, and if we're going to mature, perseverance, particularly when it comes to matters of discipline. We're going to grow in the area of, of uh, controlling our attitude and our appetite. If we're going to get to the point of controlling our temper and our tongue, if we're going to get to the point of controlling our servitude, being disciplined in, in service to God. That takes consistency. That takes perseverance. That takes continuing in the faith, day in, day out. So perseverance then, according to the dictionary, is persistent determination. It is persistent 
determination. From a biblical standpoint, the word means a special persistence and continuance of the new life in Christ given by the Spirit of God to man. That's what Paul just talked about to the, to the Colossians, what we just read. It is a persistent and continued, uh, a continuous, rather, uh, effort of the new life in Christ given by the Spirit of God to man. Now that we have been born again, there should be on the heart of every Christian a desire to persist or continue to exemplify that new life in Christ. We have been washed in the blood. We are born again. We are new creatures. We are new creations. That old man has been buried in the water of grave. That old man has been done away with. And so now, what our responsibility is, is to, is to be persi persistent in exemplifying the new life that we now have in Christ Jesus. And, and perhaps sometimes the reason why folk in the world don't really know us or they have a hard time distinguishing us between everybody else is because we're not being persistent in exemplifying that new life in Christ. We are not engaging in discipline. We are not denying ourselves from those things that are that are sinful. We are not denying ourselves from those things uh, that uh, keeps us entangled in the works of the flesh. We are not denying ourselves of desires that we know that we should not have that prohibits us or causes us to struggle with being the kind of Christian that we ought to be. Why? Because we're not practicing discipline. And we're not being disciplined because we're not putting forth the effort to persevere, to be persistent, to be constant. Yes, all of us are going to fall from time to time. All of us are going to get weak and weary. But when we find ourselves getting to that point, that's when we got to get up and fight the hearts. To keep on uh, striving to move forward. Fortitude is the capstone is, is the crowning achievement. Is that word capstone? Uh, it is fortitude is the crowning achievement of a disciplined life. Will to fight and continue enduring beyond. Uh, Odds and, and, and uh, obstacles. Your crowning accomplishment is a disciplined life. When uh, you're trying to deny yourself of, of, of even with food, you, you're trying to get uh, your eating habits and uh, one of your struggles is, you know, snack foods, whatever, whatever it is. And every time you walk by that cabinet, going in that cabinet, getting those cookies or getting those chips, when you you want to stop eating so much of the stuff you know you shouldn't be eating, but you're not putting forth the discipline. To try to deny yourself. But your crowning achievement is when you can walk by that cabin. And even though you might 
want whatever it is that's in there, you make up your mind, you're going to keep on walking. When you have that kind of sense of accomplishment, that's a good feeling. Well, the same holds true relative to spiritual matters. You don't have a set prayer time, and you try to do everything you can to have a set prayer time uh, in your life. You never do it. But the, but the time that you accomplish, I'm going to get up at a certain time or whatever. I'm going to take time. Uh, at a certain time of the day to spend some time in prayer. And you do that. You do it the first time. Then you do it the second time. And, and you get to the point to where it becomes a regular routine. That's your crowning achievement of a disciplined life. It takes effort. It takes work. It takes, here comes that word, y'all. It takes intentionality. You got to want to. To develop more staying power, the other thing that you have to do, you have to be more selective about your commitments. You have to set realistic, attainable goals. One of the issues, one of the problems we run into is uh, sometimes we try to do too much. Sometimes, I heard somebody preach about this once, sometimes we try to bite off more than we can chew. Overcommitting can be just as damaging as not committing at all. And as a result, nothing is accomplished. When you try to commit to doing too much, you're here, you're over there, you're doing this, you're doing that. While uh, committing to doing certain things and trying to be disciplined in certain areas, in and of itself is not bad, that's good, but don't try to do too much at one time. It's a process. And sometimes when you overcommit, when you try to do too many things at one time, you'll find nine times out of 10, nothing is gonna get done. Or if you do anything, it's, it's, it's not gonna be done as best as you could do it. Because you're overcommitted, you got too much going on. Yes, you have to commit. You have to set goals. You have to, uh, but but when you set goals, you set goals that are realistic and attainable. And then when you set a goal, when 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 you strive to reach those goals that are realistic and attainable, when you start being consistent. In, 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 in accomplishing those goals, then add the next thing to your list. You gotta be disciplined, but you can't overcommit. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 12 says, all things are lawful. Paul in this context talks about uh, the eating of meats and all those things that, that were issues surrounding eating meats that had been offered to items. Uh, and there were those who were uh, trying to cause problems for him because he had been eating meats uh, that, that were offered to items. And what he says here is that, and we draw a principle from that text relative to discipline and perseverance. Uh, he says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. It's not, even though it's not wrong for me to do, uh, it's not unlawful, but it ain't necessarily good. He says, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under, watch this phrase, under the power of it. I won't be enslaved. I won't be brought under the power uh, of anything, even though it's lawful. And so the point that I'm trying to make by using this text is, even those things that are good, 
the things that we, the goals that we set to try to reach and to persevere toward, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves enslaved because we overcommit to too many things. The things that we have committed to in and of themselves are not wrong, but it might not be good because we're trying to do too much. And because we do too much, we end up being enslaved. We, we become controlled by the power of everything that we're trying to do. And as a result, we're not doing anything. We're not getting anything. I hope this is making sense to you. You can take on too much and end up being enslaved to commitments that cannot be fulfilled and persever perseverance is hindered because of it. That's the whole point that we're trying to make. One step at a time. One process at a time. One of the greatest weapons that Satan has is to convince you that you cannot accomplish something with the intent of causing you to quit altogether. And sadly, that's what happens to a lot of Christians. Even though we set goals to try to mature spiritually, to try to grow in our faith, uh, try to grow in our servitude, but because we are either not persistent at all or because we try to do too much at one time, whatever the case uh, might be, uh, Satan's whole design, uh, his whole intent is to, is to put in your mind that you can't accomplish what it is you're trying to accomplish. And as a result, so many people get to the point where they just quit altogether. You, you've seen people, you know people who started out as a faithful Christian, committed Christian, and but because uh, the things of the world kept tugging at them, uh, they find themselves back out in the world. But then after a while, they, they'll be back in the bite of Christ. They'll you know, be back in service and faithful. And, after a while, they back out into the world, back and forth. And they finally get to a point to where, you know, this old Christian thing, I can't hack it. So that's what Satan wants. Because perseverance was hindered. We, we got to continue. We got to keep trying. We got to. We got to keep it. If the woman who had an issue of blood had given in to the voice of Satan, she would never have been made whole. You know the story in Luke chapter 8, 43 through 48, 12 years. Now, this woman uh, had had an issue of blood, gone to every doctor, spent all of her money, uh, wasn't getting any better, but getting worse. But she heard about Jesus. She got word that, uh, that there was somebody in town who could heal all of her, all of her problems. She pushed her way through. She wasn't even supposed to be out in the public because uh, she was considered to be unclean. But because she was persistent, because she persevered, because she had a desire she had disciplined herself, even in the midst of her struggles and, and, and her issue of blood, she kept on striving to move forward to find a solution for her problem. And when she heard about Jesus was in town, she made her way through the crowd. Just the hymn of his God. She was so determined, she said, if I can just get to the hem of his gun, I know I'd be all right. That's the kind of determination. That's the kind of persistence we have to have 
as, as people of God. I don't care. Yes, there are times when things uh, we face, it, it, on, on the face of the situation, it seems insurmountable. It just looks like I ain't going to make it through this. It just looks like there ain't no way. And even after trying, you keep running up against a brick wall, but you got to keep on pushing forward. Because when you give up, when you quit, Satan wants you to do. Scripture encourages us to keep moving forward in the spite of all. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we're going to read. And we don't think. We don't quit. After a while, we'll be reaping that. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, but continue. Thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. As Paul talks to his son in the gospel, Timothy, he says, the things that you have learned of me regarding uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and as a minister, you continue uh, in that. If, if progression is our object, or rather, it, they should say, if progression is not our object, I, I left a word out. If progression is not our object, then regression will most certainly occur. If you are not striving to move forward, rest assured, one or two things is going to happen. You're going to stand still, become complacent, or go backwards. If progression is not our object, regression, you can rest assured, is what's going to take place. As we close tonight, noted poet, Arthur J.G. Holland says this, one thing at a time, all things in succession. That which grows fast with us as rapidly, that which grows slowly endures. We have to persevere, but keep in mind perseverance is a process at a time, step at a time, day at a time. If you try to do too much fast, however fast it grows, it'll wither just as fast if you not continue to be persistent. But whatever is constant and continues and grows at a, a continuous, slow, normal pace. That's what's going to do. Because you, you will remember, the scripture talks about the fact that we run in, in a race. But this race that we run in is not a sprint. It's a marathon. The idea is to get to the finish line. Not how fast you get to the finish line. Not trying to get to the finish line in front of everybody else. The object is to finish.
And if we're going to finish, we have to persevere. I'm talking to somebody tonight. That's your struggle right there. Perseverance has, uh, unfortunately, uh, not been a part of who you are as a Christian. Uh, you, you've not been consistent in being continuous as a child of God. You, you start and you stop. Start again and you stop. Some of us, sadly, un unfortunately, don't even start. We don't put forth the effort to start. And so we either sit still or we regress. We have to, with everything within us, strive to persevere. We got to strive to keep moving forward. We got to strive to progress. And when we do that, God helps us. God gives us the strength. He gives us the fortitude to endure, to keep on putting one foot in front of the other. Yes, there are going to be obstacles. There are going to be challenges. But you'll find that when we, when you constantly put forth the effort, uh, it becomes easier to attain your goal. But we have to persevere. You're struggling right there tonight. Ask for the help that you need. Ask for the prayers of the righteous to help you be the kind of Christian, to be the person of God. Uh, who is being persistent, who is persevering, even in the face of adversity. Don't, you no longer want to be the person who, who ends up quitting because Satan has whispered in your ear and told you that you couldn't do it. You want to overcome it. Get the help that you need. Ask for the prayers of the righteous to help you right there with your struggle to engage in perseverance. You listen tonight, you're not, a, you're not a Christian. You're not a born again child of God. And uh, because uh, you have not been washed in the blood, uh, you have not been reconciled with Christ, uh, as Paul talked to the Colossian Christians, you're not able to continue in that faith because uh, that, take, that faith has not been attained through the grace of God, through and by baptism, through and by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus wants that for you tonight. He wants you to say yes. He wants you to be a baptized believer so that you can progress, you can persevere in those things that are spiritual. You do that tonight by hearing the word, believing that same word, repenting, turning from your way to God's way, from the ways of the world to the ways of Christ. Confessing Christ to be the son of God. Be buried in the water grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. Get up out of that water, a brand new creature, be faithful unto death. God will give you a crown. It won't fade away. Our Bible study, please call the church office at 901-345-1591, and we will be happy to set up a study with you at your convenience to teach you more perfectly concerning the way of Christ. If you need prayer, Please submit your prayer request to our website, or I believe there's a uh, space uh, on Zoom uh, in the chat room, a chat area that you can present uh, your, uh, submit your prayer request for those who perhaps will have closing prayer tonight uh, can pray on your behalf. You're subject to an invitation. We ask our song leader uh, for this week, 
to lead us in a verse of a song uh, as we sing this song of encouragement. Just as I am without one plea, but that I love was shed for me, and now thy bids me come to thee, O Lamb. Of God I come, I come. All here's about. Gracious God, our Father, we're so thankful for this privilege that you have given it to us tonight to engage in this midweek Bible study. And we thank you for what you have revealed unto us from your word uh, as it relates to perseverance. Help us to always be a people who are striving each and every day to move forward, to grow and mature spiritually in the way of Christ. And Father, when we receive those, uh, engage in those crowning accomplishments, uh, we will sure enough be sure to give you all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. So in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks all. Let us say, amen. Thank you tonight for again being with us. I right, we pray that this study has been encouraging to you uh, and uh, that it will be a blessing to your life. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you need uh, communion or if you need to leave your contribution, uh, on uh, this Friday from uh, 10 a.m. to 12 noon, uh, please come by the church office uh, and uh, do so. We're going to be asking uh, Brother Ford, if you give us the closing song, uh, in your closing prayer, uh, if you will play, pray especially for this situation uh, in our nation's capital uh, on tonight in your closing prayer. Um, you need to be praying about this situation, sir, because my, my fear is uh, I heard one newscaster uh, make the statement that this can either be the end if uh, everybody makes up their mind to move in the right direction. Lawmakers, uh, those government officials, uh, this can be the beginning of putting a stop to everything that's going on uh, to, to ending it. Or it can unfortunately be the beginning of more things to come. Uh, and and my fear is, is uh, I pray that that is not the case, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm concerned that uh, there's more stuff down the road. And so I just want to encourage us to be in prayer, uh, particularly to our ladies. Uh, let's, let's be careful. Uh, you know, if you don't have to go out by yourself, uh, you know, don't go out. I'm, I'm not trying to instill fear because uh, the Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear. So I'm confident in Christ, uh, but while I'm confident, I am concerned and out of concern, I just think we need to be cautious. So I'm encouraging our sisters uh, and you know, uh, young adults, young people, Teenagers, you know, if you don't have to be out, uh, particularly by yourself, don't be out. Uh, I know some of us, you know, some of you, you have to, uh, you know, unfortunately be out certain times. Just be careful. Just be cautious. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, but, but, but God got us. 
Uh, we are God's people. And he, he gonna, we're going to try to speak to that Lord's willing on Sunday morning. Uh, God going to take care of his people. So uh, as always in the midst of this pandemic, don't panic. But in the midst of prayer, find power and peace. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you same time, same place, same station next week. Brother Ford, closing song and dismissal prayer. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I can't make it, no, no. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I can't make it, no, no, without you, Lord. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we once again come humbly bow. Thank you for just keeping us safe. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us, regardless of if we feel or deem worthy or not. We're indeed grateful and thankful for how you have blessed us with opportunity after opportunity and chance after chance. We pray at this time, Heavenly Father, a special prayer for those that are bereaved, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless them and comfort them, especially, Heavenly Father, in this time where things are so different in terms of being able to comfort one another in times of bereavement. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who, who are sick. We pray that you bless them with health and strength. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all those within the body of Christ that you strengthen us all. We pray, Heavenly Father, on behalf as a nation, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you help to heal the harm that has been caused, and we ask that you bind us together and that we may be uh, united and that we may exemplify more Christian-like at attitudes and demeanor as, we, the, as the nation progresses forward. We pray, Heavenly Father, that many may have used this opportunity to reflect upon your grace, your mercy, your, long, your for, forbearing uh, in terms of blessing us, we pray, Heavenly Father, that we not take those things that you bless us with for granted. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we remain eternally grateful for all that you do for us, and that in doing so, we may be inspired to continue to live our lives in a way that's pleasing and more acceptable in your sight. As we continue throughout our journeys, we pray, Heavenly Father, you bless us all in Christ's name. Amen.